you know, I was a boss. I was an entrepreneur. Yeah. And the music business, I really, you know, I looked at it as the only way I could make money without feeling like I had a job. And I thought it would be fun. And, you know, it was an experience, but it was a lot of work. And as a manager, I realized that no one was going to give me anything. Because if they gave it to me, I was going to take everything they had. No one's going to help you be their competition. Not culturally, not human. It's just human nature not to help people. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to help myself. And that would be the only way that I can help other people. And the only way I could do that is to do it on my own. Now, when you do things on your own, people tend to look at you nutty because no one does things on their own. And the thing about being an entrepreneur is you have to be cut from a different cloth. <clears throat> you have to be able to do things that no one else is doing. <clears throat> or else it would have been done already. You have to be able to make ideas turn into things that are tan tangible that no one has ever imagined before. And you have to inspire people to believe in your dream. And you have to make them believe in a dream that hasn't happened yet. So you have to make sure that you work harder and that you would never send anyone to do something that you wouldn't do and be prepared that a boss, a boss's life is not to be easy, it's to untie knots. The more responsibility you're giving, given is because you're not gonna panic when it's time to work those things out. And in every single business, it doesn't exist. Business without tough times. That's the difference between a real entrepreneur, a professional entrepreneur, and a hobby entrepreneur. Somebody that only does what makes them feel good and it doesn't yield. You're only a professional if you make money from it. Until then, it's a hobby. Wow. Uh, we could just stop right there and just write a whole book on that one, Dame. You just hit on many gems starting off. Um, this might seem like a silly question, but we have one from it, is that how do you know that you have the gift or the talent um, as a business manager, as an entrepreneur? Or at what point do you know? Um, some people do it as a hobby, but at what point should you make that transition or give it up? I never got into it as a hobby. I got into it. I've always known in my brain that I'm better than everybody. And that's the only way you can win. You don't get in the ring and if you think you're going to lose, you already lost. You know, the thing about America is first generation, if you choose to do things on your own and you choose to go through all the pain that comes with it, at least that's what, the, you know, not even pain, the, the defining moments, you can become wealthy. You don't have to work for somebody. And the way we're programmed is to think that we need people to get things done when we actually don't. It's meant to control us. We're, we're, we're born into patterns that make us believe that unless we're told what interested are you going to be in? How hard are you going to work? How are you going to be able to enjoy it? I'll never do something for money that I wouldn't do for free. What are your thoughts when people talk about the short-term paper or trying to have long-term careers? Short-term paper is exactly that, short, and it lasts for a short term. The thing you have to understand when you're younger is you have a lot more energy and it's okay to be reckless and take chances. But when you're older, you should have responsibilities and you know, you should have learned from your mistakes. You're supposed to have evolved. You're not gonna wanna work as hard when you're older physically when you're younger. So right now, you know, I'm 49. When I was um, 21, I was thinking when I'm 49, I'm not gonna wanna be jumping around on the stage, chasing artists around. So I started to invest in things that gave me residual income so that I can make money while I'm sitting by the pool. The key is residual income. No one wants to work. You work so you can relax. See, if you get caught up in working, you don't even get to enjoy your life. What are you working for? To do more work? I work so I can relax. The having, uh, uh, people always talking about having the plan or having the goals. Um, Dane, with all of your different ventures, how far out are you planning? Um, some people are saying two years, five years, 10 years. Ten. How far do you really scope these things and then watch and see it through? I always want to see what my life is going to look like in 10 years. And a lot of times to build a brand, you're not really respected as a brand unless you do it for 10 years. A brand means you're just that, a brand. So it can't happen overnight. And any money that I get too fast, I don't trust. It's like drug dealing. It's temporary. Anything too easy is temporary or it's not legal. 
All money's not good money, you know? So, you know, I, I, I just feel like when you start to plan, you have to plan, you have to know that there's gonna be moments you're not gonna have, you're gonna have to pay people before you pay yourself, you're gonna have to look at your plan like your child, where that child comes first, and you love it, and you protect it with everything, the, the ups and the downs, you know? You become a father to your company, to your child, and if you don't love it like that, then it's not yours, you know? And that means you have sacrifices. So when, when I'm starting a company, all the people that have worked with me, bills get paid before my own. And that has to happen because people should get paid. You want to keep them working. You want to keep them inspired and it's only right. But it's all part of the game. So again, if I'm going to think about something I want to be a part of for 10 years, it better be something I enjoy. It better be something that I'm going to be interested in. It, be, it better be something that's not only going to yield for me. It better yield for everybody I love. My only purpose of working this hard is so the people I love don't have to work hard. That's it. That's it. And if you're working for yourself, then I don't even want to talk to you. If you're working for a, a, a one-seater car and not a minivan for your family, then you're not doing it for the right reasons and you, don't, you won't win. The thing about business is learning how to love others before you love yourself. The thing about artists is most of the time they're selfish and you have to deal with that. That was the reason why I had to start doing things on my own. The one thing that you have to learn is have the courage to invest in yourself. Stop trying to make money off other people all day because then they resent you for it even when you make them money. What are some of the challenges or I would say what are some things that you wish you could have done differently on this process of business? Nothing. I love exactly where I'm at in life. I'm happy. I'm independent. You know, I can honestly say, like right now I'm in Wyoming with my little brother. And he's made his own dreams come true, bigger than anyone's dreams that I've ever seen. I'm watching it. I'm here. I know I was a part of that. And I know that I'm wealthy behind what I've done and that I know I've been the connect to help other people make their dreams come true when their dreams are bigger than mine. Dame, you are, you are an expert on the music industry. Um, and one of the questions is, what are your thoughts about the state of the music industry? We know that there has been a shift. We know that things have changed. We know that there's the independent versus the major. We know that the streaming has affected things. And also we know that the deals as far as 360, there's so many things. What, what are your uh, perspectives on the state of the music industry right now? It's a great time to be independent. It's a bad time to be a slave. You got way more to give away if you're a slave right now. And you got make way more to gain if you're independent. And you have no excuses not to be independent. Because of streaming, because you can have a direct connection to your consumer, there's no reason to have a middleman as an excuse not to get to them. See, traditionally we're taught we have to give it to another culture, our culture to another culture to sell it back to us. And that's not the way it is right now. So you can have your own television networks, you can communicate when you want before uh, you had to pay to be seen on TV or radio. Now, you can be seen anytime you want. You can control your own narrative. Right now, you have the steering wheel. But at the end of the day, the fundamentals are the same. You have to make merch, and you have to have a good show. And that's all that really counts, and that's the only way you're gonna make your money. If you think you're gonna make your money making a good record in the studio, and your show sucks, and you don't have any merchandise, and you're not working hard, you're not gonna win. You're not gonna win. And what you have to understand is when you have a celebrity, the celebrity is to be leveraged. You use your celebrity to sell other things. That's the only reason to be a celebrity, is to sell other things. So if someone's paying you be, to be a celebrity, then you better have some things you own to sell. It's the only way to do it. It makes no sense to be employed or be made famous if you don't have something you own 100% to sell as an ancillary thing based on that. But the music business is fairly easy. If you try to fit into the old business, see the problem is, when businesses change, people think the business is defunct. The old business is defunct because it's a new day. It's just like old laws are defunct. It's a new day. Just like, and look at the world right now. Look, just like old education is defunct. It's a new day. So you have to evolve. It's not change. It means get better and adjust. You have to be able to call the audible no matter what. 
what are some of the business ventures because you have multiple ones and we're going to talk about some of those as well as the independence but what should people be looking into as far as business ventures right now some people suggest to keep your eyes on tech some people are saying in uh different countries different perspectives what are your thoughts on the different businesses right now or what should you keep your eye on like i said before it's about residual income so for me making content and doing it well and being able to monetize it like not just making something that you know only lasts a day something people want to see for the rest of their lives something that people will pay for so there's things i've done t- like 15 years ago that you know you see on tv and i haven't done it been around it for 15 years and i'm still making money from it now i might get a check for 50 to 100 grand for something i did 10 years ago and i i didn't have to work at all residual income is the best income to me so for me it's making content distributing it licensing it selling it and the merch that comes with it within the screen everything that's in the screen you can sell that becomes your ancillary so if i have a screen in my screen when you look at my my network game dad studios which you can order right now streaming and it's also a 24 hour network dtv if you're looking at it you like the music you could buy it cuz i make the music you like the clothes you could buy it cuz i make the clothes if you like if you want to see me perform then you can buy the tickets from me if you want to if i'm smoking weed drinking liquor you can buy the weed and you can buy the liquor from me basically everything you see you can buy from me those are the ancillary things the the the, the visual the, the the movie the television show it becomes the commercial you know it's home shopping network but for the right things and also so my ventures now are Dame Dash Studios which is a streaming service DTV which is a 24 hour network Poppington which is the clothing line <coughs> Dusko Wine and Spirits <coughs> which is where the liquor i have a vodka a whiskey and a um a riesling and uh poppington uh, this that's about it right yeah that's about uh, it right now the poppington university poppington university is basically you know a division where my interviews and my classes and the entrepreneurial things that i do you know that's where you can see those things what are some of the obstacles that you've had to deal with as you pushed forward into all avenues of business and creating it um as the primary source waiting for people to catch up like i have ideas that are always 10 years ahead so i have to wait for industry and consumers to get sophisticated so i've been doing streaming and talking about it since 2005 like you know what i mean but the industry, once i saw the internet i knew it was going to happen and that's why i stopped everything and started investing in content and learning how to make it quick fast cheap and good Some say that you were ahead of the content game before um pandemic before the industry shifted um how do you maintain having forward vision Well the good thing about for me the pandemic is streaming is pandemic proof all my numbers went up so you know again there's going to be issues as far as like as when the pandemic first started people couldn't go outside because I had my own facility I could still work safely because I owned the cameras. <clears throat> I didn't have to go to a rental house that was closed. So I could continue to work in a safe way. I was able to adjust. I just started shooting more comedy than anything. You know? One of the things Dame um and we appreciate what you have done for culture and moved it forward is the two one we wanted to talk about the culture vulture um but but then we want to move to the health as well. Uh you took a stand and started calling people out for who they were and what they were doing for the culture. Um what are your thoughts now about the whole culture vulture? I mean, I'm glad that there's been people I've been able to identify that I've been able to bench like Leo Cohen and seeing guys like Charlie Watt and Harvey Weinstein get the justice they deserve. You know? So it's crazy because these are people I had been calling out years ago for different things. and people were saying I was crazy and now that it's popular for certain people to get called out now they're ostracized I'm cool with it you know I'm glad that there's a certain awareness and that I made it all right to call people out see the reason why people look at me like I'm a unicorn is not cuz I call people out 
It's because I call white people out. And it's crazy to me that we're so programmed to fight each other instead of them. I just don't get it. And I never got it. You know, I'm not fighting my brother. I'm going to fight him. Yes, that's the one that's messing with me. But why are we programmed to fight each other? Why are we programmed to look at them like the plug and to protect them like the plug? We're the plug. And I've always had that awareness. Of course they're going to tell us we're not the plug, even though we are. So that they can pretend they're the plug. So they can still pretend they can tell us what to do. I just be like, what are you doing telling me what to do? I'm the plug. What do you think? What are you talking about? How are you going to tell, tell me what to do and I can smack the shit out of you? I can dance better than you. I can play every sport better than you. I'm smarter than you. Well, I can take your girl. How could you try to tell me I need you? Why should I protect you? And when I would get into business with certain people like Leor Cohen, the first thing he asked me to do was fight another black man for him. And I said, I don't see you fight nobody for me. Why would I fight another, one, another guy from my culture for you? And, and, and you, I don't work for you. You, you trying to make me think I need you enough that you're going to send me to do your dirty work? I suspect you must be doing this to everybody. I'm putting you out of business. What is the, um, what has been the most disappointing thing that you've had to see uh, besides the culture vultures in the industry? Um, you had a chance to speak out on that, but what are some other things that you haven't had a chance to really deal with or should we be aware of? It's just disappointing to see your friends sell out for a bag, you know, sell out their culture for a bag. Like, I don't respect you if you have to cross your friends to get where you got to go. I don't care how much money it looks like you got. You cheated and you a sucker for that. And I don't do that. That's not a real W. I could have been did that. I don't do it. Unless you fight fair, I don't respect you. I don't care what you look like you have or what people think you are, how famous you are. If you didn't get it right, if you didn't get it fair, if you had to disrespect the people you love to get there, then I, I ain't really messing with that. And I see it time and time again. I'm dis I, I feel sad when I see somebody that acts real tough in the street, act real soft in the office room. I don't like it. That's disappointing. The most disappointing, it's like seeing a black cop beat up on a black man. I hate to see that shit. It's disappointing. What has been, um, so as we, as we move, we were talking about the culture vultures, and now in the last years, you've started uh, sharing through the network, um, through the studios, the perspective of the health as wealth. Can you talk to us about this whole health as wealth? Well, again, you know, I was outside. All I see is Popeyes, liquor, bodega, you know, disgusting food, and it becomes our normal. And then I see a lot of my friends that don't get killed to go to jail, they're dying from heart attacks. You know, diabetes, just understanding that the food they give us, the food they think is all right with all the GMO and the negative and, and all the preservative is killing us fast. It's the number one cause of cancer, meat uh, and, and diabetes. And real wealth is being able to laugh, run around healthy, being able to enjoy your life. And no matter how much money you got, if you can't breathe and you hospital or bedridden or dead, you broke. If everyone around you is dead or unhappy or you're unhealthy, you're broke. So health is the real wealth. My girl, Raquel, wifey for lifey, she takes real good care of me. You know, I'm vegan, vegan-ish. Uh, I'm, I'm more vegetarian right now <coughs> because I've been eating a little cheese. But um, a little bit. <laughs> but um, for reasons. I, um, but she's been taking good care of me and it's, it's not hard to care and I just want people to see what it looks like when you care about yourself. I want the new aspirational to be taking care of your health, getting help mentally. Therapy is important to me. I have a healing is gangster and also learning how to cook, learning how to grow, learning how to be self-sufficient is more healthy. It's more sustainable. And to me, that's real wealth. And I do it. So I, I don't like to hide. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show it to you. I'm not going to hide it. I want everybody to win. So that's what the network is. The network has a point of view. It's not about distractions. Like most of the programming you see is to distract you from a life you hate and it's to make you glorify other people's lives and things that hurt us as a culture. This programming is to make you focus. Focus on self-awareness. Focus on what you have the ability to do. And if you don't, I will show you how. You know, focus on therapy, love, and if there's some real gangster shit that's going on, it's gonna be something that we're gonna learn from. We're not gonna glorify it. We're gonna see exactly how it felt 
when it all went down, the recourse, the collateral damage, you know? So it's a network that I call not programming, it's deprogramming. So we won't be distracted and we will be able to be happy because what I notice is 90% of the world is depressed and I'm not. Wow. When you dealt with uh, the interview with Entrepreneur, you dropped a couple of gems um, as far as those who want to pursue um, the entrepreneurial uh, endeavors. And then we're going to move to some of our, uh, we want you to move and talk about some of your new movies because that has been so impactful. Um, so the keys on entrepreneurship, you've dropped some of them, but what are just some last little gems before we move to discussing the, the new movie stuff? Number one, you have to be fearless. Number two, you have to make sure you can build a brand. When you get into a business, know how you're gonna make money. Don't just get in a business because it feels good and you've seen other people make money from it. You really have to know how you're gonna make the money. And then also know that you're gonna have to sustain some loss. It's not easy. It's actually fun. You know what I mean? Like it's fun. It can be devastating if you, it's about perspective, right? So if you know you're jumping into a fight, getting hit shouldn't hurt. It just means I'm gonna wear it and hit that way hard and you should enjoy it so an entrepreneur just has to be unapologetic fearless has to care about the people that he works with or she and make sure that you're hustling for a purpose not only yourself make sure you're working for people you love love protects you and respect and if you have to cheat to get it then you didn't really get it so as we go into this whole movie thing you have been doing movies for us for a very long time. Um, and can you share us originally, because there were some movies that you did that you didn't get properly credited for um, as we go back along the way. And then can you bring us up to speed about current movies? I mean, um, I've done so many. And that's the reason why I decided to have my own television network. So, you know, I just, um, I think I just finished airing the second episode of my scripted Dress to Kill. That was the second, right? Yeah, I'm editing the third. And I'm about to shoot a zombie movie um, called uh, uh, Dead Money Ballers. Uh, my last movie before that was Honor Up, which I directed, paid for, and it got distributed by Lionsgate. But you could also see that on uh, Dame Dash Studios. The things that probably people would be uh, more relatable would be my, you know, like discovering artists like Kevin Hart. You know, taking him off the stage and putting him in his first two, three movies, Paper Soldiers and Death of a Dynasty and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, funding a couple of movies for Lee Daniels, you know, in the form of a producer. Um, you know, and then there's Paid in Full, there's State Properties, and I've made so many documentaries. But really, you know, all I got to do is turn the camera on and capture it because I feel like I'm making history every day. I'm always chipping away at some dream. And once I get one dream, it opens the doors to a whole nother dream, you know? So, uh, yeah, my thing is to make about three or four movies a year um, and, uh, and get better as I do it. And, um, you know, we'll see. But, it's, you know, it's funny because me directing a movie, it's like, oh, it's Dame Dash, he does everything. Some people only direct. Some people producing a movie, oh, Dame Dash, he does everything. Some people only produce, executive produce. I'm going to act in it. I'm going to write in it. I'm going to distribute it. You know, I don't need the credit, but I don't know. It's just funny to me that people sometimes don't look at it for what it is. It's like, you know, we make the music, we write it, we pay for it, we produce it, we distribute it. Who does that? You know? And um, I just feel like I'm going to be Disney. But Gangsta Disney. Us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Gangsta Disney is, is a beautiful uh, way to describe it. Um, when you compare the music industry to the film industry, um, is it really a different beast to you or are you just using the same strategies to just dominate? Well, my, my business acronym is FLIP, right? Buy something for a little, sell it, double it up, sell it, flip it, and keep doubling it up. That's it. You know, I learned that in the street. So those prin principles and fundamentals are the same. But the businesses are completely different, for sure. Completely different. You know, it's apples and oranges. It's like football and baseball. It's still the same premise. You want to win. It might still be a team sport. But the arena is different. And the, uh, the amount of play, it's just different. So, like, for a movie, 
uh, preparing it is a lot. You have a lot of prep, prep, preparing. Then you have to shoot it. And then you have to edit it. And then you have to get it distributed. You know? And you have to plan all of that in a certain period of time. There's no calendar for music. You make music when you feel like it. You know? And, you know, the editing process, like the post part of it isn't so... Like, shooting is easy, but editing is not easy. You know? Like, you can make a record and not mix it, put it out, and it still go. But if you shoot a movie, if it's not edited right, if it's not mixed right, if it's not color corrected right, if there's no sound design, it, it, it'll be disgusting. And, 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 and it's, just, it's, just, it's just different. Just like fashion. Fashion, movies, music, different. It's all different. Um, as we move into our questions, we are almost at the top of the hour. Um, thank you, Dame, for everything that you shared already. It's almost um, a book you have written, if we could write a book. Do you have a book out, or are you writing any books? Coach that was one of our questions. Coach of Vulture. Um, okay. I think we're working on Coach of Vulture, too, Kenyatta is. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know. It's like, I feel like I don't know the end of the story yet. So I, I can't make an autobiography. I don't know what chapter I'm at yet, but there's so many. And uh, I just feel like my whole life is more like a movie and a television network and you can see it all. I document everything and I will be controlling the narrative. No one will be erasing the history of Dame Dash. You know, I will make sure of that. And that's another thing, you know, you have to capture everything because if you don't control the narrative, somebody else will and usually it doesn't behoove you. And as I'm going through the questions that are being chatted to me privately and publicly, uh, one of the questions um, was, uh, how do you handle commercial inserting and advertisement when you're dealing with all of the branding and all of the uh, money that's coming into your projects? Well, most of the commercials are, are me because I have all these companies. But as far as like, you know, I have one drop who sponsors us. Um, and it's, it's something I don't make and it's something I think is necessary and it's a product I like. I just incorporate them with the product placement. I make them a commercial and I put it before the, uh, the, the programming, you know, for the television network. I, I don't really understand the question and if I didn't answer it right. Oh, no, you, you dealt with it. Um, the next one was, do you, how do you deal with other small businesses who want to be a part of your network? I, I haven't come across that yet. I mean, the business is of making movies, so, you know, if your business is working, I can hire, or if your business is making other movies, you know, I could, if I, you know, if I know you, I could get to use my platform. I have a function now that I can do where you can buy it um, on demand before you go over the paywall. So before you do the subscription, you could actually just buy what you want for certain projects. You know, it all depends. It really all depends. But right now, I'm still mastering it, you know? Like, I can't say that I've licked it. I'm, on, I'm doing, you know, very well. But, you know, I don't have a hit, hit, hit TV show yet, you know? And, and, you know, I think people should understand that, you know, like, it's cool when someone has done something 10 years ago and, you know, there's legacy there. But really, how hot is that, right? You hot when you're selling something now. And I haven't really sold anything at mass level at, to hip hop culture in years. I mean, I have Rachel Roy, but you know, I don't consider that that. But um, you're winning currently when you have a product that's doing well currently. And you know, I've been doing a lot of cool shit because I'm learning it. But this is the first time in 10 years that I've really hit the marketplace with a product that I do want to hip hop culture and be profitable because everything else I've been doing has been to build up for this moment. So I don't even consider myself where I want to be by any stretch. I'm still fighting every day. I'm still learning the business every day. You know, just like with Rockefeller and Rockwear and Rachel Roy and every other business, it's a process and it's a grind. So I'm still learning. So I don't know where and how quick I'm going to get there. You know, one hit TV show or one hit movie, you know, the gradual process is fine. But, you know, I'm waiting to catch that lick, a current lick, you know. So we'll see. So I feel like when I start a business, it makes me equal to everybody else that's starting a business, regardless of what I've done before, because I'm always in a new business. Yeah, I do have some, lever some celebrity to, to leverage, but how much celebrity can a businessman leverage? I'm not an actor, rapper, singer, or any of those things, you know? But I don't mind starting from scratch. I don't mind 
getting it. I mean, you have to love it. You have to love it and you can't look at it like a struggle. You, you know, it's not, it's not for everybody. You, everybody could do it, but not everybody likes to do it. Not everybody likes to box, even though they could fight. You know, not everybody likes to get tackled, even though they could play football. If you don't like both sides of it, because with the yin and the yang, there's always going to be positive with negative, because you won't know how to compare the two. You won't know how to enjoy your positive if you don't, you don't have a negative to compare it to. So it has to happen. If you're not built for that, you know, I don't think the entrepreneurial life is for you. But I don't see why people stress. I feel like fear controls everyone. It's the dream killer. You know, I just think if you're fearless, you win and you're happy. If you don't worry about what people think, then it doesn't matter. You know, as long as your work is good, as long as your product is good, no one has to do you any favors. You don't have to be nice when your work is good. Your work just has to be good. So my thing is make sure your work is good. And then you don't have to do nothing. There's no excuse in it. I've never seen good work not sell. I'm going to come to two more questions and then I'm going to go to a couple of the mentors of the program who wanted to ask a couple of questions. Um, one was is that this person doesn't know. They privately chatted and said, uh, Dame, how do you still feel about music and are you doing music? Um, can you tell them about the Black Kings? Because I'm a fan. I love it. Can you tell them all about the music stuff that you're still doing because they don't know? Well, I did a project called Black Rock with the Black Keys a couple of years ago, you know, and they were the biggest group in rock and roll. But again, I didn't want to be all in front of that and do all that, so I did it for fun. Right now, I have a rock album out called The Black Guns, and, you know, it's me at the lead. And, you know, I made a docu-series. You can see it on Dame Dash Studios. Every song, I got an episode for it. And it's just me doing live instrumentation. I have the best guitar player on the planet. I can guarantee that. And just me doing what I want to do for fun, you know, and, having, and, 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 and you know, rocking out. We did like six shows, and we're having a ball. Twist, Twist is supposed to meet us, and we're going to, you know, make some music and do some rock and roll. But when I do music right now, I do it for fun, to build a catalog, to put it in my movies. But it's really more for fun. I, I just love making music, but I don't like the business of music. I, I don't like the, the, that scene at all. Everyone's corny to me that are exploiting the artist. So the artists aren't calling to me, the industry is. How, how are you handling, um, we've seen public and private the way you've had to boss up many times with conflict. Um, somebody asked, how do you handle conflict now um, as you've transitioned from music business to film industry and content creation? I don't really um, consider things that don't yield conflict so I don't waste my time on my ego. So if something's bothering me, I'm not dealing with it unless it yields. If you're gonna do something that disrespects me, I'll get to you when I have time, but you just won't be around me. But other than that, you know, back in the day, I would deal with, I'd be mad about principles, you know, and I'm still mad about principles, but I would take the time to explain it to people that weren't listening, that don't yield, and I'd be like, you know, I learned, like, why am I mad at someone that I have no expectation that's not gonna listen, and they don't have more than I do. So I'm gonna just let them go live in their little world, go back in their little box, and I'm gonna go do what I gotta do. You know, my ego doesn't drive any so much more of my action. You know what I mean? It doesn't bother me as much when like a punk tries to act tough, and I know he's soft, and I know I can squeeze his nose off, but now I walk away. The other question was, um, what words of advice would you give to uh, one of the mentor, mentees in the program about conquering and overcoming fear? And then we're gonna move into some of the mentors who had a couple of questions. So the question now, Dane, is how do you overcome fear and conquer those fears to the mentees? I'm trying to think the last time I was scared. The last time I was scared was last night. I was on a jet and the shit just started going crazy in the air and the, the pilots was talking too much up, up there. And I was, you know, I was like, not talking like, you know, like, you know, you're on autopilot and it's smooth. They were like, Lega. and I was, I was genuinely scared for a second, for a second. And then I just said, fuck it. It is what it is. I love it. Um, I want to go to one of our uh, mentors of the program. Yeah. His name is McKinde. Um, he wanted to uh, address you. Uh, McKinde, you there? Yeah, yeah, y'all hear me? Yeah, go ahead, McKinde. So Brother Dame, I'm going to say real quick two things. One, you know, I came up in this game 
in in a similar role that I feel like I read about that you came up in this game, right? Like I was the dude that was trying to make sure shit was on time and everybody showed up and everybody got paid, right? And that was an unglorified role, right? But what's interesting about that is that I did that long enough that that became a part of my name. And I had a coach once, he asked me, you know, what's the most valuable thing you have? And I was like, love, family, you know, money, whatever. And he said, nah, all wrong. He said, it's your name. So what I wanted to ask you directly is like, with with the fact that you've had to, in some situations, like you said, these cats is vultures, you ain't fucking with them. Yo, I gotta move around. How much was your name the the you know a value to you based on the fact that like yo because when you think about it yo corporate executives at every every joint get fired for something get hired somewhere else right you can go all the way down the line you can go all the way down to priests catholic priests right so how how much of it about your work and what people knew to be your name no matter what you were about to do was valuable to that next move well you know i was lucky enough to always have a cool name dame dash so i always liked my name <laughs> You know, but my name didn't mean anything until I had uh, a history of what came with my name. You know, being aggressive, um, um, fighting, being profitable, you know, taking a team to the chip. You know, so your name is only worth what you do and you just have to do it. So, yeah, when I walk in the room now, yeah, Dame Dash, you know what I've done? And it's not it's not disputed. You can Google it. You know, I'm not trying to convince you of something. Cause a lot of people come in and they're like, I could do this, I could do that. But it's like, what have you done? Why should I believe you? Because you talk, you know, a good game. And it's not a good game. It's, 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 it's when the game, is, it's when you've actually done it. It's tangible. When you actually can say, I'm tell, telling you something based on experience. When you walk in a room, every single thing you've done, everything, every single thing you've done and what you represent, that's what your name represents. That's right. your so, brand. So that would be my point. That would be my point. My point is the fact that people know you are already good for that. They already know you're going to handle that. They already know that you're taking care of all these pieces. My name, my original name is my king day, right? I'm a light-skinned brother from the hood in Chicago who had an African name and went through an African perspective in his sociology and West life, right? So it's only about one of me out here. So my name had to be good. So what I did, I feel like helped me there. I'm bringing you to this last question and I'm gonna turn it back over to Marshawn. You know, you you at the top of the business, everybody on this chat, including me, is trying to figure out how to get to your level. So we sitting across from you right now. Each of us are actually literally sitting across from you virtually like we had a business table. If I'm pitching a business to you, what is that point system? What is that real quick? I need to know these three things first before we have another conversation. Like, for, I, I don't come from that world of pitching. I don't pitch. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm usually the business. So what I can say is don't wait for somebody to give you anything. You got to do it so you never have to pitch. And then you make your own rules. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't pitch. I'm saying we're pitching to you, though. We're pitching to oh, you. Pitching we're asking me. you to be the investor. Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not investing in anybody right now but myself. <laughs> I ain't mad at that. All right. yeah. I turn it back over to my show. Much love, bro. Uh, thank you, McKinde. I uh, appreciate you sharing. Um, another mentor from the MAPS program, his name is Johnny Bravo. Johnny, are you here? Um, wanted to share with Dame? Yeah, first of all, Dame, how you doing? Uh, respect what you're doing, follows you for a long time. Um, had a quick question as it relates to uh, investment. Um, I know you've always preached putting up your own money um, and pretty much kind of like, you know, just writing it out. Um, at what point do you um, either or do you ride your investments out, even if you're even if you're putting a lot of money into it and it's not yielding or or do you just say, listen, I believe in it. I'm going to just stick my guns you know, to it and every dollar that I really make. I'm going to really put into it regardless. Kind of like, you know, like if a stock go bad, you know, you just like, listen, I'm going to ride it out for the long term. Or do you kind of have a breaking point where you say, hey, listen, if I put 500 in and in five years, maybe I don't see it back. It's time to kind of, you know, switch directions. Or do you just keep funding it and kind of just, you know, truck your way through it? It, it all depends. You know, if I'm not enjoying it anymore and if I don't feel it, if I don't see the potential in it, then I'm, I go to something else. But, you know. I would usually, I'm trying to think of a business that I stopped and 
Like, you know, the only time I stop a business is when I don't like the people that I'm in business with. Mm. But until then, I just, I don't, I don't, I, I don't really move. Like, I, I never, I can't, it's like I'm going to keep swinging until I get hit it. It might not mean I'm going to invest as much money in it. It means I have to reapproach it. You know what I'm saying? You have to make adjustments so that you have, you know, bottom line is you always have to have respect for your burn rate. You can only do what you can do. You know what I'm saying? So it might mean some people got to go, whoever you hire. And if you're investing in somebody else and not yourself, you know, then you, I, I, that's easy. I'm not, I'm not investing in people. That, I'm not fighting harder for someone than, than, than they are for themselves. You know what I mean? Like my, yeah. my job is not, my name ain't, yo, know, Dane, make every nigga's dream come true. That's not my job. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My job is if you can make me some money and I can make you some money, together we'll do it. You know? But I'm not here to just be making people money. That's not, that's not my job. Yeah. My job is to be it. fair. You know what I'm saying? My job is, is, is and again, I understand your question. Yeah. I just don't know your business. It, it, right. it, it depends. It all depends, bro. You know, it depends on what you got. If you have, put it like this. You know when I stop investing in the business when I don't have no more money? That's really it. Because I always love my businesses. So it's like, I'm doing it for fun. Like, I might spend money making a record because I love it so much. That might be something I don't believe. I, I don't care if I make the money back or not in the moment. I make it later. You know, if they don't get it now, they get it later. But certain businesses, when it ain't no more money, it ain't no more money. It's gone. You know, you got to go and sell a piece of it then. Or, 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 yeah, usually that's what happens. Yeah, that's what I would do, sell it. Thank you, Johnny, for sharing. I uh, wanted to go over to um, Plea and Dave, a hero, uh, whatever it was that they wanted to share and add to this conversation. Dane, thank you. You are hitting a lot of the questions on the head. And for those of you who had more questions, please put them in the chat. And also, if it's something that you don't want to share, you can send it to our private chat. We'll go over to uh, Dave. Uh, Dave Hero, are you there? Yeah. What's up, man? What's up, bro? Hey, um, I don't really have any questions, man. I just appreciate your gusto. I appreciate you. Like, nothing will fuck with me. Nothing will get me down. Um, thank you. Thank you for doing this for us, man. It's all good. I appreciate it. Hope it's contagious. It is. You got the vibe, man. You just like, it's like it seems like you just you keep on trucking. Next, next job, next job, next no. job. Oh, no, I appreciate that. You see, you just say you're working with your brother, man. No, I just said I'm with your brother right now. My little, you know, Kanye's like, so I'm, I'm out here looking at his stuff in Wyoming. That's all. Oh, right on. Yeah, right just on. checking, just checking out what he's doing. That's all. Cool, cool. I'm proud of him. He has his empire. I got mine. It's great. He has a big empire. Yeah. Well, Parker Lee and I do music licenses.